go. There we go. Right, we are actually live. We're going straight in with our very important person, our VIP celebrity guest. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together virtually for Hayley Tamadin. Good evening, Hayley. Yeah, virtually. <laughs> we've been chatting backstage. I feel like we're going to get on, Hayley. Tell us, where in, the, where in the world are you today? I am in sunny Manchester. The sun has just come out for you. Yeah, uh, it's just come out of peace, been miserable all day. And we've all, how are you finding lockdown? Yeah, you know, we've got to do it, haven't we? So it, it's all right. You just got to survive and keep going. Stay inside. That's yes. the main thing. Stay and, indoors. And you've got your little boy and your other half with you. What's your little boy's name? Jasper. Jasper. And he is how yeah. old? He's seven months old. And, and how's Jasper finding lockdown, do you think? Oh, he's loving every second of having both parents at home. And, All that attention. Yeah, he's getting a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah I can well <laughs> imagine. Um, so I, I did a bit of stalking of you, Hayley, earlier on. I hope you don't mind. I hope Wikipedia is accurate because this could be really oh gosh, embarrassing. Oh gosh. Uh, I've looked. At, there's nothing dodgy. I've not. I've, there's nothing dodgy, Hayley. Uh, but I understand you're from Blackpool, the mighty Blackpool. Yeah. Um, yep. and, and I don't know whether everybody else, I reckon everybody or a lot of people know that you're on Emmerdale, Coronation mm -hmm. Street, Waterloo Road, you, and you actually won Dancing on Ice, didn't you? I did. I did win it a long time ago, but I did win it. It wasn't that long ago, Hayley. It was 10 years ago. No. Yeah. No it way. It seems like yesterday, but it was 10 years ago when I won. Wow, that that actually that actually is quite a long time ago. How many weeks yeah. does it go on for then, Hayley? Uh, Dancing on Ice goes on for about three months wow. altogether. Um, but for us, it's longer than that because we start in we start training in the October. So it altogether, it's like six months. Yeah, wow. it's is crazy. It, is, it, is it pretty exhausting? Yeah, but also one of the best things I've ever done, apart from having my baby. Yeah. Oh, well, it's interesting because I was going to, I was going to ask you, um, I didn't realise, I, I want to share with everyone, I didn't realise, you can tell me, I've missed out loads, but you've been on Rocky Horror, Greece, Fame, Mamma Mia, Spamalot, Chicago, most recently Jamie, and, and loads of others. What, what is the best, what, what do you enjoy getting involved in the most? Is it screen? Is it stage? What is it? Um, it do you know, it's such a hard question to answer because um, I love both so much, um, but I do love television. There's something quite magical about theatre, but also doing telly is just, you know, it's a dream. I love it. But it's, it's so hard to answer because it's like my, my dream job, all of this. You know, I'm very lucky I get to do it. So, yeah. At what age did you, do you reckon you knew that you, like, what, that you wanted to entertain people? I was doing tap dances at the age of six for the old ladies oh, wow. that sat at the bus stop outside my mum's cafe. Oh. And they all used to give me 10 p a dance. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And I, my mum always knew I would do something from such a young age to do with oh, singing wow. or performing or something. I just loved it so much. Um, and I just wanted to go to the theatre all the time. And, and uh, you know, I got to a certain age, 10, 10 or 11, and my mum said, well, if you want to do it seriously, then, you know, we've got to concentrate on this. And I co she couldn't afford me to do everything. So I just ha had to drop all the other hobbies and just concentrate on performing. And that's what I did. Wow. What, what does that look like? So at six years old, you figured out that what you wanted to do. There's a long way to go before you get to the point where you can do it. So you obviously practice it a lot, but what, what happened in between, you know, sort of that, that time, you know, what, what, what helped you along the way? Because there'll be loads of people, or some people, watching that thing. Do you know what? I'd love to do what Haley's done, but it just it doesn't happen overnight. So what kind of, like, what kind of things did you have to do, do you reckon? It definitely doesn't happen overnight. You know, the most important thing for children to have is a dream. I think if you want to do something or you want to be somebody or, or you want to do uh, science or you want to be an astronaut or you want to take care of animals and that's your dream, then go for it, you know, and I don't think you should be held back in any way, shape or form. I know that my, my parents... Oh, gosh. I mean, they were skint my yeah. entire life. My parents have been skint. Every little penny that they had, they kind of, you know, I'm so grateful now. But as a child, you don't realise how much yeah. your, your parents and parents 
Um, and I'm so grateful to them that they kept going and pushed me to do it. And and I think at kind of 16, I realised I went to drama school in London and my mum and dad were just broke. And I think it was then I thought, I love this so much and I've realised how much my parents have helped me. I'm not going to let them down now. So, um, yeah, it was it was always my dream and I never... I never let anything else get in the way. And there's something about that that, that self belief. I didn't realise over the last year we, we call it self efficacy, and it's the idea that if we genuinely believe that we can do it, you've got to really genuinely. You can't pretend at it. If you genuinely believe that you can do it, there's in, in many ways there's nothing to stop you. And we, we taught the kids. It might be that you have to knock on the first door, and they might say no, no, you know we're not letting you in. The rejection actually gets easier, I would imagine, over time. And eventually, you know, somebody will open that door, I guess. Well, in this industry, there are, like, for every one person that says yes to me, ten people say no. Wow. So imagine that your whole life where even you do a competition and you don't win or you go for an audition and they say no. How many times that happens is so many more times than really? actually getting the job. Yeah. And for every time you get knocked down, you have to pick yourself up and say, OK, that's all right. And we move on to the next one and we start again. And because if you get sad about it every single time, then you'll, you know, you'll never get the job or you'll never get to where you want to be. You've got to have a thick skin and be prepared for a little bit of rejection because that's what's going to happen you know and i i had a tough time at school i was uh i was bullied a lot at school um i didn't have it easy and again oddly it's made me a stronger person now i am much stronger i think i'm actually a lot kinder um i i truly believe in being kind to everybody even even bullies or people that aren't very nice because i think that they need it a little bit more you know um so yeah I, I and i also believe that if you really desperately want something you can get it yeah I, I, just, absolutely you can get anything you want you've just got to believe that it's possible so where was your first break then where, where's that moment that you think wow wow all that hard work that 10 years or more of hard work what is there a moment that you thought oh wow it's happening because that's what you wanted yeah. there must be so many people that want to do what you've done but that give up after you know the, the first rejection the second what what is there was there a moment that you look back and you think i knew some exciting things were, were going to happen there um yeah definitely i'm gonna walk over and get myself a drink while i'm trying to um definitely uh emma emmerdale was a big one for telly um and fame the musical when i was 19 years old was wow. the other one I'm, I'm pausing for a drink <laughs> you know and you get that clacky mouth on your mouth is that vimto oh. is that vimto Haley? what is yeah. it no way vimto. do you know what Haley? look <laughs> you're drinking vimto look at that, that's, look at that. industrial <laughs> size vimto that one it's a drink of champions you know i love vimto yeah uh, to, i'm telling you, you can drink as much vimto as you want Haley. Do you, know, do, do you know, down it if you want. Go fill it up if you really want to. I oh, know, I've left it over there. It's, uh, it should be next to me, but it's not. Tell us about anyway, that moment. Yeah. What was that moment? So, so, Emmerdale, how does it work? Do you get an email? Do you get a phone call? What, what happened? It was a phone call. Emmerdale was the first telly big role in telly I got, and I was 27, so quite late on. Yeah. Um, and that was just life-changing. And then the first musical I got, I was straight out of college. I was 19. But... I didn't walk out of college like all my friends did and get a load of auditions and get an agent and everything was easy. I've had to fight for everything my entire life. And if I've needed something, I've had to fight for it. Yeah. So for anyone that thinks it's come easy to me, um, it just hasn't. You know, you do have to work hard. Um, and yeah, it was Fame the Musical. I got a role and it was in the West End in London. And I remember coming up the escalators at Leicester Square yeah. and I turned round and there was a giant poster for fame with my face on it oh. and I remember ringing my mum and I was 19 crying God, I'm going to cry before here the, before the days of where you could Skype or turn yeah. the camera around and show your parents things you know I just said to her mum I'm on a poster in Leicester Square and, that is cool you know yeah, it was just unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. That I think to 
life, you appreciate it more when it comes. Rather than, I think, people that get things on a plate, I've never had that, you know. So I think I appreciate everything a lot more because I've had to fight for it. Hayley, man, you nearly finished me off there. I can't even imagine that feeling <laughs> of coming up in the big smoke and, and seeing your picture up there. Um, I've actually had, yeah, it's incredible. whilst I've been talking to you, uh, a message from my mum and dad. They saw you in Sunderland uh, and they said that they just remember how energetic and, and how amazing you were and it, like, what an incredible dance you were. And I know that they're watching. So I told them that I would pass oh. on the positive feedback. Um, Send them my love. I tell you what, it would be lovely. Um, I understand that you you do some of your own writing. Is that right, Hayley? I love to write, yeah. I don't tell many people about it, but I do love to write. And what kind of stuff do you like to write? Um, well, I'm, I've, I'm halfway through writing a children's book. Um, it's all poetry-based. Uh but maybe I'll, I'll, you know, read something like that for you guys tonight and uh, test the water, see what people think of it. And if it's worth me carrying on writing it, maybe that would be a good thing. I have a feeling that it's going to be absolutely brilliant. Do you want, uh, we've got some uh, some people, We could. I thought afterwards we could, uh, some people are saying hello. Somebody called Dawn Tara or Tara says, hi here, I used to work with your dad and remember you from Phyllis Davis School of Dancing. Oh wow! Glad you're doing well. I wow. hope you're enjoying motherhood, and I have a feeling that's probably made her day that we that we've managed to pass that on to you. Well, hi Dawn, lovely to see um, you so virtually. I'll, so <laughs> if, if I'll, I'm going to hand the screen over completely to you, and I'm going to have a wow. little look at this. Screen. I'm just going to listen in, but it's all over to you. Why do you do some reading? I'm nervous. Do you want me to hang? Do you want me to stay next to you? Do you like you stay mi- next to me? Stay right. next to me. I'm going to look really rude and look at the comments, but I'm going to be listening whilst you're there. Haley Tamadin. Over to you. Right. Are we ready? Okay, so tonight's story is called Mouse Visits the Dentist. Here is a tale of a mouse and a bear, the greatest of friends but an unlikely pair. When people walk past them, they all stop and stare at the tiny grey mouse and the hairy brown bear. Their fun and adventures are something to share. Their friendship is special and ever so rare. At the end of this story, I'm sure that you'll care for the tiny grey mouse and the hairy brown bear. Bear, said Mouse, do we have any treats? Some chocolate or toffee or maybe some sweets? No, little mouse, you have eaten them all. You eat them so fast for a mouse that's so small. Why don't you munch on an apple like me? Tasty and crunchy and healthy, you see. You could have an orange, a plum or a pear, but not any sweets, as the cupboard is bare. Mouse said, I'll go to the shops and buy more. I do love my sweeties, Bear, that is for sure. OK, Mouse, go on then, said Bear with some doubt. But if you eat too many, your teeth will fall out. Oh, don't be so silly. My teeth are just fine and I eat chocolate and sweets all the time. I'm off to the shops now to buy us some more. Goodbye, Bear, she said before closing the door. Once in the sweet shop, she squeaked with delight. Hundreds of jars filled with sweeties so bright. So much to choose from, said Mouse to herself. I'll need some help getting these jars off the shelf. The shopkeeper's name was Jerry Giraffe. He had a very long neck and an interesting laugh. Ha 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 ha, you were here yesterday. What sort of sweets can I get you today? Jellies or toffees, chocolate or not? All of it, please, said Mouse like a shot. I'll take it all home for me and my bear. OK, then, said Jerry. Just make sure you share. Mouse got the sweets out, her face full of glee. This was later that night after eating their tea. Nom, 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 she said as she chomped on a chew. I do love my sweeties, I love them, I do. Then as she was chewing, she let out a squeak. Ee! she cried as she struggled to speak. My tooth, Bear, my tooth, she said, looking sad. Bear had a look. Mouse, this is bad. We need to get you to a dentist and soon. So Bear rang the number of Mr Baboon. Bring her in now, Bear, no time to delay. I fear this may well be... 
They got to the dentist with no time to spare, and Mr. Baboon said, please sit in this chair. His lovely assistant, called Daisy the Duck, said, please open wide mouse and let's have a look. Mr. Baboon said, this doesn't look great. Your tooth has gone bad. It's those sweeties you ate. I'm afraid this may mean we have to give you a filling. It won't really hurt, but there will be some drilling. After an hour of poking and prodding, Mr. Baboon was happily nodding. There we go, Mouse. A lesson's been learnt. You have to be careful where sweets are concerned. You must brush your teeth, Mouse, at least twice a day. And have a few sweeties, but not every day. The chocolates and jellies and toffees you've chewed can all be replaced with less sugary food. As Mouse agreed, she climbed onto Bear's shoulder. I want to have all my own teeth when I'm older. I'll cut out the sugar, Bear. I promise I will. You're not coming near me again with that drill. Ha, 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 laughed Mr. Baboon. Go home and rest. Have a nice afternoon. I'll call you next week to check how you are. But in the meantime, no more chocolate bars. Hilly, Hilly. Tell you, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I'm telling you what, if we don't get a lot of people going that way, telling us that you, should, you need to publish this. Uh, you, Oh, man, I felt like I was getting, I was very intimate, that reading, like one-to-one. -one, it was it. <laughs> Haley, it was absolutely brilliant. And I hope lots of people say thank you, because I feel like we've had a world exclusive. Oh, you, you're so kind. No, do, do you know, do you know Haley, do you know what I could feel there? I, I, I think when you do stuff like that, you're putting yourself out there, you're making yourself a little bit vulnerable, aren't you? That, you, you know... It's a really personal thing, writing, and for you to share that with us. Honestly, that's made my night. That's absolutely brilliant. Well, I'm glad brilliant. you enjoyed it. Thank you. So look at that. Jill, Jill at work says, brilliant. Uh, Jill Drake, who I think is the rapper's missus, she says, well done, Haley. You should do audio books, Haley. Definitely. Hey, Jill. Now, that's a really good idea. You, you absolutely, you have to do audio books. You, I totally get it. Do you if want... anyone knows how to make audio books, let me know. <laughs> Haley, we'll, we'll help you. We've got, we've got a bit of extra time in our hands. I'll help you. We'll figure it out. We'll, Perfect. We, we, uh, remember, staff said, we, th we think you fit in quite nicely at our place. Uh, now, Rachel, <laughs> my friend at, in Harleypool is saying, modern day Pam Ayres. I don't know. Who oh, now I love, I grew up reading Pam Ayres. Right, well, I feel bad that I should know Pam Ayres, but our Rachel oh, thinks that I... You don't know who Pam Ayres is? No, and I, and I think I'm like really cultured and well read, Haley. Pam Ayres, Google Pam Ayres. She is one of the, one of the best poets. Is it ever. like as good as Mills and Boom? Oh, better. <laughs> uh, there is a lot of love on here for you, uh, Tash McLeish uh, from school. Mum from school is saying, "Love it, well done." Did you write this for your baby or before? I wrote it before. I've been writing these for, uh, do you know what? I write them and I put them down and I don't do anything with them. And then I write another one. So I've actually got, I know, I'm, I'm terrible. You, you, I'm gonna five. Be, uh, you're going to be getting random Skype calls from me going, Hayley, Hayley, why are you not doing it? My I've got about five and, I, and I've and i got one about uh, when Mouse and Bear go ice skating. I've got Mouse and Bear go to the theatre. I've got Mouse and Bear go to the seaside. Uh, I've got lots, but I chose this one because it had lots of different characters in it. It's so absolutely I thought that would be better for the kids. Brilliant. Could I ask, my mum, our Kath, Kath McPartland, is asking, uh, would you like to work on Coronation Street again sometime in the future, or do you prefer stage shows? I love stage shows, but now I've got my little boy, uh, oh. I'm, I would go back to Corrie in a heartbeat. That, yes. That is a good question. Ella Freeman has asked, what is the first thing that you'd like to do after lockdown? See my mum. Yeah, I How, can't wait to see my I'm, mom and I'm, have a hug. I'm yeah. thinking Jasper's missing out on all those cuddles. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Marianne, Mrs Shaw, a member of staff from school. She's, she's beautiful, beautiful woman she is. Uh, she says, what's your favourite thing to bake? I love to bake. And oh. you know what? Since having a baby, I've not really done... It meant much of it at all, but I love to make cakes and uh, little cupcakes, and I love to make birthday cakes that I get to decorate. So when it's someone's birthday, what's I your, love that. What's your favourite type of little muffin cake type thing? What I always just I always make um like a plain sponge, or I put like a flavouring like a 
purple or orange or something like that in it. And then I love decorating. I love doing the piping, the icing and everything like that. I love that. That is it. That sounds good to me. Let's have a look what else we've got. Oh, I've clicked on the wrong thing. Hang on. There we go. Uh, <laughs> P- uh, everybody in Hull is saying hello. Uh, Pauline thinks that you're inspirational, which is a oh, nice thing to be said. That's, that's, that's a cool really word. I, I do like that word. Uh, Mel Fuggle is saying that your wee boy, her wee boy loves you, which I think is nice. Oh, Rachel thanks. Wilson thinks that she, you're very down to earth. Which Thank I think, you, which Rachel. I think is, nice to see you. I tell you what, there's a, there's a lot of love on here for you tonight. When you're feeling it, if you get a bit down over the next couple of weeks, come on and have a little look. at uh, My next door neighbour, Alison, says it's a fantastic story. Um, Jenny Fig says she's also a Phyllis Davis ex-student. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, proud people out there that you've you've done Blackpool proud, Hayley. Thank you. You're that genuinely, means the world. You're, genuinely, really you have done our little part. Of the, I know I'm like not from round here. I'm from the North East, but I feel adopted. And you all, are adopted. Uh, all I hear is uh, so many lovely things about you. And coming on, you are absolutely, truly you're inspirational. you cry, stop it. Like, honestly, honestly, <laughs> people talk about you in such high terms. Uh, and, and everyone else goes, oh, she's lovely. She's a lovely girl. Lovely girl. Thank you. you. You could have been all diva-like on here, couldn't you? You know, like with not, a rider. Not when you grow up in my family. I've been kept grounded, firmly, feet on the ground well, my entire life. Do you know what, Hayley? <laughs> uh, I think we need to pass on our regards and well done to your family. Because as parents, we, we did talk before, it's quite hard being a parent. And oh, you you yeah. don't tend to get a certificate or stickers or things like that. Uh, they've yeah. done an amazing job with you. Um, and I think we, we should give them a round of applause, Hayley. Yes. All those parents out there. It's hard work being a parent, particularly at the it minute. It is hard work being a parent. It is. It doesn't we... come with a handbook. No, it definitely Everyone's isn't. Everyone's just doing their best, aren't they? Exactly. So anybody out there, you've heard it from celebrity Hayley, Hayley Tamadon, that it is bit, it's hard work being a parent. We're all making it up as we go. It's particularly hard during lockdown. Uh, my, my kids are, are presenting challenges, Hayley. Not going to lie. Oh, gosh, I know. It's um, Honestly, there is. it's crazy because at whatever age they get to, you still hear parents say, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? Even my mum, last week, she said, do you think I got it right? I said, well, I think I'm all right. Don't you, mum? <laughs> I don't think I've grown up to be a bad person. Parents just worry forever, don't totally they, great. about their children. And all we see on Facebook is all the beautiful pictures. They don't share the stories about getting up in the night and all the nappies yeah. and the, being skinned. Listen, if you, if you want reality, come to me. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. Do you know what? I have had a little look on your Instagram uh, and you do keep it very real. And I, I do. Yeah. I really like what you're about on Twitter and stuff like that, Hayley. Thank um, you. you. You're very Thank open you. about stuff. I do, I do have a lot of respect for you. So I'm going to hang up. Well, I'll tell you what. You hang around. I'm going to press end broadcast. And, and then I'll tell you how, how lovely you've been, Hayley. So I'm going to click on finish <laughs> on the thing. Thank you to everybody else who's been watching. I'm going to click on finish and I'm going, to say, I'm going to say thank you to Hayley in private. That sounds a bit weird, <laughs> doesn't it? Anyway, thanks very much. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Bye.